So let's look at sample question number one from the exam guide. And this is a good example of a question that isn't necessarily related to Salesforce, but more related to uh, dealing with contact centers in general. And these are just in industry specific best practices that you need to be familiar with. There's a certain percentage of questions that are like this. This can really throw you. So it's a good idea to get familiar with some of these core principles that are in this section of the course. So the question is, which three tasks should be included in a business continuity plan for a contact center? And it says choose three answers. One thing to note is that in the actual exam, they'll always tell you how many questions to select. You won't be left wondering if you need to select one, two, or three, for example. It will prompt you with how many you need to answer with. So the options are, as far as what the task should be included in a business continuity plan for a contact center, would be either A, route cases to agents in an alternate center, B, disable the interactive voice response system, C, deliver training on case handling for contingent staff, D, update the case status field values, and E, monitor service level agreements and notify customers. This is a really tough question if you've never dealt with a uh, contact center at all. And so the main thing is, is that these particular answers that are correct are A, C, and E. And we'll discuss this briefly. First of all, we mentioned in the previous lecture about how you need to plan for redundancy. And so one of these ideas is that they need to route these cases to agents in an alternate support center or contact center. So disasters do happen, unplanned events happen, and you need the ability to roll things over to a different call center. And so I actually worked for a business process outsourcing company that handled a service and support for a lot of large companies such as Sony, etc. And so this call center or this support center had centers located in the Philippines and Nicaragua, in the Americas, all over the place. In Europe, they had hundreds of centers all over the globe. And so they had customers, these very large, robust customers, and they wanted to be able to provide 24-7 support in multiple languages. You will need to plan for redundancy. And so the idea here is that you need to be able to route cases to agents in alternate centers. Now you don't want to disable the interactive voice response system and this is also known as IVR because that is when calls are coming in if you ever have called into a support center saying you know press one or say yes or press two or say no that's the interactive voice response system you don't want to take down or disable your entire call system you just need to route those calls to an alternate center so B is incorrect C, and this is a proactive step you can do, is you can deliver training on case handling for contingent staff. Contingent staff would be people that are trained in handling cases in, in case something goes wrong. This has to do with cross-training, enhancing the skills of your reps or your support staff or other people so that in a bind they can help with your business continuity if things go wrong. So C is a correct answer. D, update the case status field values. That won't do anyone any good. As far as business continuity, you can't update the status field on all your cases to the Philippines is underwater right now. Help, you know, that's, that's not a valid answer. That won't help. E is monitor service level agreements, SLAs, and notify customers. So if you don't meet your service level agreements, you will need to notify your customers. And I briefly looked at entitlements and entitlement settings in the previous lecture. We'll be dealing with service level agreements and entitlements and setting milestones in a later section of this course, but E is a correct answer. So this is a good example of a typical question you'll find on the exam and one that will scare you to death if you had never prepared for this sort of scenario. You can study all you want related to the service cloud, but then you're going to get thrown for a loop for some of these industry specific, but not service cloud specific questions. And so this is testing your knowledge related to just providing customer service in general, and you will find a handful of these questions on the exam. And so that's what this particular section of this course is about. And so with that in mind, now that we know why this information is important in this section, we're next going to look at the types of contact centers and their business drivers.